we are now going to go over the three layers of the hierarchical design. Um, the first one, like we talked about before, is the access layer. Um, some people will also refer to as the network edge, and it's where the end user devices or endpoints connect to the network. It provides high bandwidth device connectivity using wire, or it can even have a wireless access technology such as uh, gigabit ethernet or a 802.11 AC wireless. And while endpoints in most cases will now use full um, capacity of these connections for extended periods of time, the ability to burst up to these high bandwidths will require helps improve the quality of experience and productivity of the end users. Um, and as you can see, in this picture, you can see the access layer, which is the one all the way at the bottom. It's the first, it's the first layer. And as you can see right now, you are going to be able to connect to um, these access layers with endpoints. Um, you can have a laptop, you can have a camera, you can have um, personal telepresence, tele you can have a printer, you can see that you have wireless devices as well. You can also have a phone that is uh, connected or trunking with a telephone um, all the way down here. And like I said, um, you can also have a camera that is um, a, a camera that is able to um, get a IP address. Um, and then we also have the distribution layer. And the distribution layer, uh, the primary function of this layer is to aggregate access layer switches in a given building. And the distribution layer provides a boundary between the layer two and also the layer three domain. And this boundary provides two key functions for the local area network. On the layer two side, um, which is going to be the one at the bottom, which is going to be the access layer. Um, for the access layer, um, the distribution layer creates a boundary between, creates a boundary for spanning three protocol, um, um, limiting propagation of layer two faults. And on the layer three side, which is going to be the one connected to the core, uh, the distribution layer provides a logical point to summarize IP routing information when it enters the core of the networks. And the, the summarization reduces IP routing tables for easier troubleshooting and reduces protocol overhead for faster recovery whenever these, whenever any of those, um, whenever those connections fail, so whenever one of those devices um, fails. And as you can see right here, the distribution layer is the one in between the core and the access um, layer, right? And then last one, the last layer that we have is the core layer. And as the network um, grow beyond three distribution layers in a single location, uh, most organizations should consider using a core layer to optimize the design. So the core layer is basically the backbone and aggregation point for multiple networks and provides scalability, high availability, and fast convergence to the network. And all you want you have to worry about on this uh, layer is speed, right? You want to provide high-speed connectivity for lar large enterprises with multiple campus networks distributed worldwide, and it can provide interconnectivity between the end user endpoint access layers, um, access layer, and other network blocks, such as data center, private cloud, the public cloud, the wide area network, the internet edge, and network services, um, and, and you know network services. So if you want, if you have your IP phones, you have to connect to your IP phones, which is in the WAN. Um, you can connect to it with the core. If you have to connect to the uh, to like um, Amazon Web Services, you can do it from here. So the core is the one that's going to connect you with those devices that are on a different. Um, on a different network.